Okay, everyone, let's get this thing kicked off officially. Um, hello and welcome to the um, Know Before You Go. This is a special pre-conference Q&A session that is meant to um, get you up to speed and just get you really pumped and excited for EastCon 22. Yeah, thanks for taking the time to tune in this afternoon. We've got a lot of neat things to talk about, so we're just going to dive right in. Um, we're going to be answering a lot of questions at the end, so make sure you throw them in the Q&A session, section over here, not in the chat where most of you guys are talking right now. Um, and as we go along, um, we'll pay attention to what those questions are, and we will get to them before we wrap up. So conference is just a, a few days away, and um, we know you've got a lot of questions about what this year's event's going to look like because it's going to be so different from what you all come to know about East Conference. And then we have so many new facilitators who are joining us. So um, let me just give you a quick conference experience overview. Um, so, you know, this year is a hybrid conference event. So we have some attendees that are attending or that are coming virtually and some that are or some that are participating virtually and some that are coming to Hot Springs to be with us in person. Um, for the virtual attendees, you all will have access to watch the general sessions and participate in networking opportunities such as conversation starters. And you'll also be able to attend a handful of the live streamed breakout sessions. And all of that will happen right here in Juno. Um, for our in-person attendees, you all will get the same Juno access. Um, as our virtual attendees, but you also get to come hang out with us in Hot Springs for a few days. Um, so you'll get admission into all of the breakout sessions, whereas our virtual attendees are only going to get about half but our in-person attendees will, will be able to go to all of them. Um, there's also going to be on-stage recognition opportunities. So if your school is named a winner, you get to come on the big stage and receive your award, um, which is really, really fun for our kids. Uh, you get access into the exhibit hall where you can see all of the booths. You will also get invitations to special events like the, um, the senior breakfast and senior lunch, the student champion reception, and East Fusion. And we'll talk more about those in just a little bit. But regardless of how you're attending conference with us this year, there are a ton of ways for you to connect with um, others in our East community. Uh, so speaking of the conference experience, uh, you're definitely going to want to grab a seat for the official start of East Conference, which is the opening session. Um, you're going to join us in the Bank OZK Arena or on Juno if you're virtual, starting at 9 a.m. on Wednesday, and we're going to get the party started. Um, you're not going to want to miss our featured speaker, who is also an East alum. Her name's Alan Irvin. We're really excited to have her. Um, and then, of course, when we're ready to wrap up the week, you're, we're going to meet back in the same place for closing session at 1 p.m. on Thursday. There, we're going to be recognizing all of the hard work of our competition winner, winners, but we're also going to be announcing awards for Best of Conference and the Conference Showcase Judges' Choice Awards and more. We'll even get an official look at the uh, student-produced conference highlight video, which is a really exciting thing. Uh, so our program should note that neither of the general sessions will be live streamed that for free this year. I know we've done that in the past, um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in depth later. Um, but for now, just note, it's not going to be live streamed for free. So um, I've already seen a couple of questions come through the chat and in the Q&A about breakout sessions. So let's just talk about those real quick. Um, we know it's really important for you to have access to, um, to, to the schedule to see what we're offering this year. So you can look at the schedule on the website. Um, it's under the Engage tab. Those sessions are also loaded into the Juno platform. Um, so you can see even more information there as well. Um, from 10.30 to 3 on Wednesday and from, I believe, 8.15 to 11.30 on Thursday, we're hosting several breakout sessions um, for members of your conference team to attend. And let me just share three of them that stood out to me. Um, one is Hacking the Code with Lieutenant Tim Tate, Cyber Warfare Instructor with the 223 Cyberspace Operations Squadron project creation and how to identify community needs with our very own Derek Ratchford, East Facilitator at Sonora Middle School, and then how to become an expert in something with Rob Brisk, the engager in chief with the Wellington Initiative. Um, those are just three of many really exciting ones that we've got planned. So I hope that your kiddos have been checking out all of the information and are making plans to visit a few. 
Um, note that two of the four of our breakout session rooms will have live streaming capabilities. So all of our virtual attendees will be able to participate in those. Um, we also have what we're calling the Virtual Connections Lounge in room 205 at the Convention Center. That will be available as sort of an overflow for in-person participants um, who are interested in watching a live stream ses session. So let's just pretend that all of the seats were full in all of the breakout sessions um, and you really wanted to go to one and it's being live streamed. Well, then you can just hop on over to that virtual connections lounge, um, open up your computer, toss in some headphones, and you'll be able to join and participate in that session through Juno. Um, just be aware that as you're looking through the Geno platform and you're seeing sessions that are really interesting to you, you can click the favorite button. But by clicking that button, it's just it's adding it to your my schedule. But that doesn't mean that you have a reserved seat in that session. Um, the seats are first come, first serve, but the breakout rooms are pretty big and can accommodate some pretty big numbers. So um, just send your, you know, make sure you get over there a few minutes early and, and get in line for those sessions if you have one that you really want to go to. Um, but we just wanted to make it clear that you do not pre-register, you do not reserve seats and sessions this year. Um, but with, uh, I think, 26 or 27 breakout sessions to choose from, you there's something for everyone. That's right. Um, now, you may have noticed if you have looked at that breakout session schedule that there are a lot of gaps between those sessions, and you might be wondering what to do with that time uh, for your students. And we definitely recommend that you guys take advantage of our conversation starters. Those are 20 minute Zoom like experience hosted on the Juno platform. So that's fully virtual. Uh, conversation starters are an opportunity to meet and chat with other e students about projects and conference related material and then even just some fun trendy topics some of my personal favorites from our list this year are what's the best lesson you've learned while working with a community partner uh, what's your biggest project fail and what did you learn from it and then recommended tech what's one piece of technology that you think others should know about uh, please note that each conversation starter room has just enough space for about 40 participants. Uh, but again, you do not have to pre-register for uh, these conversation starters. Um, you can't do it anyway, even if you wanted to. So, <laughs> Yeah, um, and I'll just give a quick shout out. We didn't mention this on the top of the, the presentation, if you will, but we've got a couple of East staff members who are in the chat. Um, Bradley, Whitney, and Melissa are hanging out in there and they are answering some of your questions as they come in. And they're also reiterating some of the information um, that we're sharing. So um, please put your questions in the Q&A section, um, but just know that they're also in there answering those questions if, if we don't, in case, in case we get to the end and they've already been answered on here, <laughs> they'll take care of you. We'll answer the ones at the very end. Right. I also, um, Jessica, I oh, also yeah. realized we didn't um, say who we are. We didn't. Oh, we didn't. Yeah. Hi. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm Emily. Um, I'm Jessica's second in command. Uh, if you don't know me, if I haven't met you yet, um, but you should know her. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm Jessica Dunham, director of events. Been with East for about 10 years. Um, and this is our very first hybrid event. So, yeah, we're so excited. We forgot to introduce ourselves. It's wild. <laughs> okay, so moving on to some of the other information we want to share. Oh, you're right, Thomas. Seminar was hybrid. You're right. It's a little different because this year, the people that are participating virtually can participate in real time, whereas at seminar, they couldn't. So you're right. You got me there. Um, but it's a little bit different, a little bit trickier for our staff trying to figure out how to make all this work. Hybrid live. Yes, Kristen. <laughs> OK, so aside from the sessions and the conversation starters um, and the exhibit hall, of course, where all the great booths are going to be, um, we our in-person attendees also have the opportunity to attend um, a handful of special events, if you will. Um, the first one is East Fusion, a night at the museum, which is taking place on Tuesday from six to eight at the Mid-America Science Museum. Um, this event is free and optional, but there is a required registration. We can tell you that the registration is already full. There's a there's just a max capacity on what the museum can handle this year um, due to the virus that will not be named anymore. Um, 
but there we are still taking people on a waiting list and so if you have not registered yet make sure you put your name down at least for the waiting list um, there is a registration form under the attend tab on the conference website um, Melissa is the one managing that information and she will let you know that you've been added to the wait list and then she will let you know if and when you are moved from the wait list to the official list. With that being said, if you are on the list and you have decided to go do something different on that night, if you'll just please let Melissa know as soon as possible so that she can open up your spots to someone else. Uh, what else? Um, oh, we've got our student champion reception, which is taking place on Wednesday in the grand lobby of the convention center from 3 to 4 p.m. Um, this is just an opportunity for your student champion, if your school has one, to come and celebrate and get to network and hang out with other student champions. Um, there is a registration for that. I'm going to see if one of my team can drop that in the chat of where that registration is because I am, it's escaping me at the moment. And then last but not least, we have two really great events for our, our seniors who um, are East 12th graders, our seniors. Um, we have a breakfast that is, or a breakfast and a lunch. Both are gonna be on Thursday at the Hotel Hot Springs. The breakfast is from 9.30 to 10.30, and it is gonna feature a really great waffle bar, um, all thanks to our friends at A-State University. And then the lunch, the senior lunch will be on Thursday from 11.30 to 12.30. Um, it's gonna have a taco bar, thanks to our friends at UA Little Rock. Um, tickets are only $2. You can still pre-register online. Um, I'll see if my team can drop that link in the chat too. I believe it's under the attend tab on the additional, um, additional events section. Um, so you still can purchase those tickets, $2 a piece. You even get a, um, I think even on the back of the ticket, it gives you like a $2 credit to the gear store. So you basically get your $2 back and you get a great lunch out of it. Um, we have a limited number of those tickets, though. So I would definitely encourage you to pre-register if you're even considering it at all. Um, we will sell any tickets that are remaining on site in the gear store starting on Wednesday morning. But again, limited number. We cannot, will not increase that number. So if you're interested at all, make sure you get signed up. Uh, okay, I think that's all I had for this one. Well, that's a lot of well-deserved celebration. Um, and it seems like a really good time uh, to revisit a couple of just our basic East Conference safety procedures, um, especially for some of those smaller events. Uh, first and probably most important is the official East Conference COVID-19 safety policy. I did see a question pop up about this earlier. Um, and here's really what you need to know. At this time, masks are mandatory for East Conference 2022 attendees, but proof of negative tests and vaccines will not be required. East does reserve the right to make changes to that policy, so we're going to continue to monitor the situation. Um, however, we are just committed to making sure that everybody is safe and immediately sharing any updates that we have um, in regards to our policies with attendees. Uh, the second policy you should be aware of is the bag size limit for general sessions. So bags larger than 14 by 14 by 6 are not permitted at opening or closing sessions. Um, bags are also not allowed to be left unattended for safety reasons and no weapons obviously are allowed. Please don't let your kids come this, to conference with weapons. Um, we also have some general safety tips for you guys just to make sure that your experience is a little more enjoyable. Um, please make sure that you and your students are all wearing your name tags at all times um, and practice the buddy system. Um, that's a really, really good one to make sure nobody gets left behind. However, if uh, anybody does get left behind, you're going to want to make sure in advance that you guys have some sort of rally point or a meetup spot so that you can reconnect with each other. Um, and if if all else fails, just head to the registration booth and somebody on our staff will help you uh, relocate your group. And I'll, I'll add this note in there. Um, well, actually, while I'm saying this, oh, 
Fred already is on the student champion. They were having a hard time finding that form, but Fred's got it. Um, about the bags. So facilitators, you will be getting a bag at registration, one, one for you, for your program. Um, these bags are permitted into the um, general session. So you don't even have to worry about that. That, that bag is, is going to be perfect for you to take in there if that's what you choose. Or you can just leave them at your booth. Um, but we've gotten a couple of questions about whether or not that bag is the accurate size um, based on the bag guidelines. And it is. So you're all good. Okay. Speaking of registration, um, I, I know there's probably a lot of questions about this. So I'm going to give you a few bullet points of information. And then um, if you have any additional questions, definitely toss them in the Q&A and we'll get to them. So when you show up on site at conference, your students and you are going to unload your vehicle and bring everything inside. And then while your students are setting up the booth, facilitators will come to the registration. And that's where um, you're going to just double check and finalize your conference roster. So everybody that's coming to conference from your school. And it's where you're going to get all of your goodies. So all of your bags and T-shirts and the fun giveaway items and everything that we've got, um, we've got um, purchased for you. But here are just a few things to know. So the, um, the deadline to add or drop people prior to conference has passed, but you can still make changes. You can switch people out. So let's pretend that um, your student John gets sick and can't come to conference. You can switch him out for Joe. You just change the, the person and it shouldn't affect your registration. There's no late fees. And that is something that you should be able to do just by logging into your My Planner and going to your roster. You should see a change button where you can make those changes. Um, once you get to registration, there's going to be two lines. You can either choose to go into the express lane, which is going to be for schools that don't need to make any changes. So that means that you have brought everybody that is on your roster and no one extra. You don't need to change any t-shirt sizes. You don't need to purchase any additional tickets. Like your roster is good. Um, you'll go in the express lane. If you do need to make changes, so for example, if you need to change people out at the last minute or if you need to add or drop somebody, we can do that there. But you're going to go in the regular registration, i.e. the slower line. Um, it just takes a little bit. We will still get you through as fast as we can, but it just know that it takes a little bit of extra time. Um, and this would be for schools, again, who need to um, add or drop people um, or purchase additional tickets for something. Um, you would just go in that line and we'll have a staff member there directing you and helping you figure out which line you need to go in. Um, if you do have to make changes on site that result in any sort of a fee, so if there is a late registration fee or if you purchase a ticket or anything like that, um, you will have to be prepared to make payment on site right then. We cannot invoice um, and the only payment forms that we can accept are cash, check or credit card. So just be prepared with that. Um, we can accept, uh, we've gotten this question a few times, we can accept physical copies of the media release form on site at conference. Just know that there will be a delay in um, that getting updated on your student's account, which will also delay your student having access to Juno. Um, we have to have that media release form in, in order for them to get access to Juno, and we just... Once all of our staff is on site working the event, we just have limited abilities to go and process the physical copies that are brought to us. So you can bring them, just know there will be a delay and at least a day. Um, I had something else with that. Oh, your student will also on their name badge will still have the do not take a picture of my student sticker until that um, media release form can be processed. And again, it's just gonna take us a little bit of time. So bear with us. Um, I think that was all I had for registration, but again, throw your questions in the Q&A if there's anything that you want me to cover. Jessica, I have a couple of questions myself about okay. registration um, and just some general booth questions. Um, what if a school needs access to Wi-Fi during conference? Okay, so we, um, the convention center does, um, or 
we make public Wi-Fi available to all of our schools. Um, but if you, for some reason, require a dedicated um, hardwired, um, like hardwire, landlines can be purchased from the Hot Springs Convention Center. Um, note that we discourage the use of hotspots, external jetpacks, MiFi's, anything Bluetooth, um, just because that impacts the convention center's internet capacity. So try to refrain from using those or at least turn them off while you're in the convention center. Um, but yeah, public Wi-Fi is, um, that's readily available. And if you need help with it, you can go to our friends in the help desk, the tech help desk booth, um, which will be in the exhibit hall at conference. Awesome. Um, we've also gotten a lot of questions about um, what if a group wants or if school wants to bring in a group of students that aren't on their conference team. Okay, so we would refer to this as a school group. It's a real fancy title, I know. Um, but these groups are welcome to come check out the exhibit hall for free. There is no sort of pre-registration or fee attached to that. Um, we would just ask that, or let me back up a second. They can come for free and they need to make sure that they come during the exhibit hall open hours, which are on Wednesday from 1030 to 430 and on Thursday from 8 until 1130. Um, so all we would need from those people or from those groups is an adult chaperone would have to come to registration to check them in. Um, we need to know everybody that's going, that's in that group. So you can bring us a list of the students that are with you, or you can handwrite them. We'll have a sign in sheet for you. Um, this is just another one of our security safety precautions. Um, after they get registered, we'll give them an exhibit hall visitor pass, and then they'll be able to go into the exhibit hall and check it out and hopefully um, get really excited about what they're seeing and want to try to make the conference team the next year. Uh, one thing I will note is um, I think I mentioned that pre-registration for school groups is not required. Um, we just ask that the um, that these groups still adhere to the conference guidelines, including the dress code. Um, hey, Jessica, what happens if an in-person attendee needs to exchange a conference T-shirt or purchase <laughs> an extra one? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Uh, we always get this question. So um, attendees can change, can exchange their official conference T-shirt for a different size and or purchase additional conference T-shirts um, starting on Wednesday at 1030. Uh, if you want to make, if you want to exchange your t-shirt for a different size, you'll just take your t-shirt to registration. They will give you a voucher that you can then take to the gear booth and they will give you your updated size right then and there. And if you want to purchase additional shirts, all you have to do is just go to the gear booth. I believe they're going to be on sale for $10. Um, and they look really good this year. So, um, definitely bring bring some extra cash so you can grab a few a few of those for your students who couldn't come to conference. Well, uh, speaking of uh, bringing some extra cash, um, while you're at it, um, we definitely think it's a good idea to bring some for the concession stand. If you didn't see it yet, um, in the FAQ section of the attend tab on the conference website, we have a uh, copy of the menu there. So if you're really into those big soft pretzels like I am, bring your money. All right. So for this year, we have 245 East programs registered for East Conference 2022. Um, 203 of those are coming to hang out with us in Hot Springs. And then we've got 42 that are participating virtually. Um, it's a lot of students. Um, who have produced some really incredible projects and we cannot wait to hear all about them. Um, make sure that your team receives the recognition that it deserves by fully participating in the conference showcase. Um, this is a requirement for all programs, regardless of how you're attending. And let me give you a little bit of a breakdown of what that looks like for each program or each type of participant. So in terms of the school booth, um, those are not required, but are encouraged for our virtual attendees. Just note that there's not going to be a virtual booth presence in Juno. That's not an option this year. So if you wanted to set up a booth, it would just be setting up a physical booth um, in your classroom that your students can sit in front of while they're um, doing their, um, their program pitch, which I'll come back to in just a second. Um, but for in-person attendees, you have a booth and it's a 10 by 10 booth. Um, 
you, those booth numbers were shared a couple weeks ago. So um, go check out the website if you haven't already to find the location of your booth. Um, and then just make, yeah, make sure that you're going by and you're visiting the other students' booths and talking to them about their program and what kind of projects they're doing and, or even just stopping to say, hey, I missed you at conference last year. Well, two years, three years ago at this point. Um, for your program pitch, so for virtual schools, um, that program pitch video is due by today at 3 p.m. All of the information for those um, are on the website and have been for a few months now. I believe it's under the Engage tab. The conference show, yes, the Engage tab, um, you click on Conference Showcase. So again, those are due by 3 p.m. today. Um, for the in-person programs, all of you have been assigned a 10-minute um, judging time. Um, that information can also be found on the website. Um, this is when your students will get to pitch their program to the judges. And then there there's, should be an opportunity for the judges to ask a few questions afterward. Um, so just a few tips for preparing this portion of conference. Um, you know, make sure that your students are thinking about some of the questions that judges might ask them at conference and practice how they would respond to that. Um, make sure your team knows and is using some of those um, keywords, things like the CART model that we, we um, talk with you all about in phase and throughout the years. And then share examples of student growth and community impact. So um, there's a ton more information, a ton more tips and tricks if you're still trying to finesse that program pitch um, for our in-person attendees. Just go check out the website. All of that information is there. All right. Um, so if you are looking for a way to keep up with all of your East Conference photos and videos, or if you are just interested in seeing what everybody else is doing now as they start preparing or even during conference, um, we definitely think that our conference social wall is your best solution. Uh, you can post about your team's adventures on Facebook, on Twitter, or on Instagram using hashtag EastCon22, and your content will be featured on our gallery. So check out the main page of Juno, um, and you'll see what, we've, what, what we already have up there that's already been posted. And while you're at it, um, make sure that your team uses social media to participate in best of conference. These are contests that are an opportunity for both in-person and virtual programs to showcase their best work in five big categories. Um, that includes the Dressed to a Tee contest, which showcases your custom conference t-shirt, the Signature Design contest, in which you show off your best booth design, the Tech in Action contest, which lets us see how you've incorporated cool and creative technology into your booth. The Suited for Success contest um, for schools that have demonstrated professional dress, conduct, and booth appearance. And then the East in Print contest, which displays your brochures, flyers, and other printed handouts. Uh, Best of Conference submissions will be accepted beginning on Monday at 9 a.m. And then voting will run from noon on Wednesday to 11.30 on Thursday. So head to the engagement tab of the conference website for more information. Um, you can also find all that information and more on Gino our virtual event platform. Um, so this is the platform that we utilized last year for conference. If you all attended, you will it will look very familiar to you, but with a new fresh design. Um, do you know this year is gonna function as the virtual platform for our schools that are attending virtually, but it's also gonna function as the mobile app for our in-person attendees. Um, so with Juno, you'll be able to connect and watch your general sessions and your breakout sessions, um, receive real-time updates and notifications, and find a peer and find like peer-to-peer -peer networking opportunities. Um, Juno has a really great um, system built so that they can recommend sessions based on your interests and things that you fill out in your profile. So make sure that you and your team have filled out your profiles, um, whether you're attending virtual or in person. Um, and if you're coming in person, again, don't forget to download the, the Juno Live app. Um, you should have gotten an email with additional instructions about how to do that. And if you have any trouble, reach out to our amazing tech support team at tsg at estaff.org. 
Um, one last thing before we turn the floor over to you guys. Uh, so whether you have been to conference before or not, we highly suggest taking a look at the conference resources section under the My Planner tab of the conference website. Um, here you're going to find just a ton, a ton of resources um, and some need to know information, including our load in and load out maps. Uh, which are going to be really important in helping you guys determine the flow of traffic when you're loading and unloading all of your booth stuff. Um, and then we're also going to want to pay some special attention when it comes to maps to the road closures map, um, especially for Thursday because it's St. Patrick's Day. And if you don't know, um, Hot Springs hosts the world's smallest, so no, not the smallest, the shortest St. Patrick's Day parade every year, and they block off some of the streets surrounding the convention center. So um, pay attention to that. Uh, that way you don't get stuck in traffic for the world's shortest parade. So. <laughs> It's quite the, I've never actually gotten to see it for myself, but I hear it's quite the spectacle, even though, you know, it makes you think the shortest parade would not be so spectacular, but it is. They have a lot of really great um, people who come and ride in the parade. Like I think this year, um, Sam Pittman is in it, among other people. Um, okay, so we threw a ton of information at you. Um, we know you probably have questions. So uh, I think I've seen several come through chat and I think there have been um, some in the Q&A. So I think I'm going to turn it over. I don't know if it's Whitney or Bradley or someone on our team, I think is going to feed us some questions at this point. Question from Matt is what is the difference between program pitch and conference showcase? Okay, good question. This is kind of one in the same. So conference showcase is what we refer to as the assessment component of conference. We don't, it's not really an assessment. We're not grading you against your peers or anything like that. But conference showcase is what we call the, the assessment piece, if you will. Within conference showcase, there are two components. One is your booth. The other one is your program pitch. So the program pitch is the, the 10 minute presentation that you're giving to the judges during conference. And it's one of two components underneath the conference showcase umbrella. Does that make sense, Matt? I hope <laughs> you can't respond to me, so I hope it does. <laughs> okay, good, good. All right, what else we got with? I'm just looking down this list here. Um, some of them have been answered, but I have one from Nicole down here that says our second chaperone slash admin do not have to pay for sessions. Is that correct? Um, it kind of um, it depends on the program. That may be a one off question. Um, Nicole, if you'll just shoot me an email. I think you're correct, but I want to double check before I promise anything. So shoot me an email, um, just send it to events at eaststaff.org and I'll, I'll take a look for you, but I think you're right. Okay. Um, Drew asks, should I plan for my virtual students to miss all day of classes or just three to four hours per day? Good question. So the majority of the of the pieces that are available to the virtual attendees are going to take place. Um, well, it's so on. It's it's going to take place on Wednesday and Thursday. Wednesday, the very first thing is the opening session, which starts at nine, and then immediately following opening session, we have I think four forty five minute breakout sessions that happen, not back to back. There's a little bit of time in between. But um, if you want them to go to all four of those sessions, and I think they would be wrapping up around three, so nine to three on Wednesday. Um, but not that's not required. Just keep that in mind. So that's probably more of an all day versus Thursday is going to be more. I think breakout sessions start at eight and go until 1130. And then we have the closing, which is from 1 to 2.30. So that one's more like three to four hours. But it's really up to you and what your students, what's what's possible for your students. Um, for our schools that are attending virtually, we require you to come to opening and closing. The breakout sessions are extra. We hope you'll take advantage of those. Um, but if this is just extra students who are attending and participating virtually, um, then they're 
there's really not a requirement there, if that makes sense. Okay. Nicole asked, do we get feedback for conference showcase? Yes. Um, I believe Fred told us today that he is hoping to have the feedback sent to the schools um, within two to three weeks. I know Fred's in here, so I'll let him respond in chat just to be 100% sure. But we just talked about this question today. So the answer is yes, you will get feedback. I'm just going to get Fred to clarify approximately when that will be available. Okay. Fred asked, <laughs> when will awards be announced? Great question. Emily, you got this one. That is a great question. Um, so we will be doing awards during the closing session. Um, so if you have finalists, um, please, if you can, um, try to get them there. Uh, they're going to want to be around in case they just happen to be a winner. And just to celebrate each other, um, it's a it's a pretty prestigious thing. So, yeah. Okay, um, Aaron asked if they will be able to watch this video back later in case they missed it. Should be. Um, yes, yes. I'm just not sure when it'll be available, but we'll make it our top priority. Um, maybe tomorrow. Ashley has a question that actually pertains to me as well. <laughs> um, she said all of my nine students I tried, uh, or I'm taking a conference, tried to log in to Juno on their mobile app, and all of them were unable to log in through that app. They went on the web version to do so, but still haven't gotten through, gotten in through the app. So what would be the best route for her to get help? It's a good question. Um, it's strange because um, I was able to get in easily, and Bradley and I have the same phone, I think, and I don't think you got in yet, did you? Nope, I've had some problems as well. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you mind if I jump in here? Sure. Um, in order to get access to the app, first you need to go to the Juno site and go into your profile and click on the magic link button that will let you get into the app. So have you done that step yet? Well, and Eric, she's... They're, they're not on here live, so they can't respond to you. Um, but it sounds like, Ashley, this might be something that you can reach out to Eric at. Um, Eric, will you drop your email in the chat and she can, y'all can talk through that and see if there's a solution there. Okay. What else do we have? Bradley, um, if you see any more, uh, feel free to jump in. I, I think we've hit most of them. Um, that haven't already been answered in the Q&A. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm looking through them too. Um, I think, do we, Nicole asked a question about, how much is that, how do we get proof of attendance to break out for school to kind of as profession, professional development training for teachers? So that's a, I don't know the answer to that question, Nicole. Um, we have not, issued on our end, we have not issued certificates of participation for breakout sessions at conference. Um, but I would suggest reaching out to your site support person. Um, they can give you a little bit better information. I, I know more about the event side of things. They know more about the education side of things and what what would be what would work for you in this instance. Anything else? I'm trying to scroll through the through the chat and through the email. Um, I think Ashley just uh, asked a new question. Is there a way we can know that our students are attending the sessions? I believe it's breakout in, sessions. In real time, no. Um, we don't have a way to do that this year. Um, but if you want to know if they did attend the session, we are still scanning students as they come in to sessions. So you'll know that they went to a session, but we just won't have that information available to you until after conference.
Ashley, that's awesome. I'm glad it worked for you. Oh, yeah, great. That is exciting. I have to tell us your secrets. <laughs> okay, anything else? Oh, yeah. Um, Brenda just responded about the professional development question in the chat. Um, let's see. Um, anything else? We will attempt to answer. <laughs> okay. Well, um, if there's nothing else, we will call it a day. And um, if any questions come up between now and then, feel free to reach out to us. You can contact the events team directly through events at eStaff.org. Um, be patient with us and our replies. Um, we are we are inundated with emails at the moment and just trying to get through them as quickly as possible. Um, but otherwise, we cannot wait to see y'all next week. It's going to be so exciting.